So once upon a time, there was an investor who made a lot of money. And he learned about other opportunities to have gold in California. So he decided to have a go. But he already had a lot of money. So he entrusted his money to his servant. He gave 5,000 to one servant, 2,000 to another, 1,000 to another. He gave them according to their abilities. He asked them to invest and see what happened. Then he went out to find more gold. All these servants learned how to invest from him. So the man with 5,000 invested in and 5,000 more. The man with 2,000 invested in and 2,000 more. They learned from their master and was able to invest. And they were glad because what their master taught them really worked. Their master was a good teacher. Then they waited for their master to return. They watched for their master to come back. But the guy with the 1,000 did not practice what he learned from him. In fact, he hated his master, so he didn't want to be useful for his master. He complained about his master and the way he lived his life. <laughs> he thought his master was a lazy and wicked. He did not want to obey his master. He did not love his master, so he dug a hole and hid the master's money. He did not want to use it or risk it at all. He didn't want to manage what he was given. After a long time, the master returned with a lot of gold. He wanted to find out how his master was doing. One servant brought 5,000 more, another servant brought 2,000 more. The master was like, wow, you're really good at this. You're trustworthy and spiritual. Let me put you in charge of many things. Enjoy your life with me. The man with uh, one bag came and said, Master, you are difficult. You do not want to work. So you make people work for you. You make your money work for you. You know how to invest. So since you know better than me, I just hid your money in the ground. Here is your money. This man enjoyed a good life and good food the master provided. But he was accusing his master for not working hard. But the fact was he was the one who didn't work hard. The master was like, wait a minute, hold on. Why didn't you invest my money? Why did you sin against me like this? You must take a risk and invest your money. You must make your money work for you. You must make people work for you. But if you don't want to work with me, why do I need you at all? I could just put my money in the bank and receive interest. That would be much better than this. Well, I'm sorry. I need to let you go. You are not my servant anymore. So he took 1,000 and gave it to the one with the 10,000 because he obeyed his masters and he invested. The name of the game was Obey the Master or Use it or Lose it. If you use it, success is guaranteed because God helps you. Jesus told this kind of story because he wanted people to learn from him and live his life. Jesus loved God. Jesus loved God. So Jesus helped people to obey God and live his life. When people obey God, they realize how much God loves them and is gracious to them. When people obey God, they experience God who helps them and helps people through them. Have you discovered that sometimes God is like a mirror. God is like a mirror. When people look at God, sometimes they only see themselves. 
The good and faithful servant saw God who is good and faithful. The bad and lazy servant saw God who is not good and faithful. Negative, judgmental, and mean servant thought God is negative, judgmental, and mean. Those do not obey God or love God think that God is demanding and unreasonable. But still, we cannot understand God without God's help. We must, uh, God must help us to understand the Bible and God's grace. Jesus must help us to see God who is good and faithful and merciful. Jesus must help us to understand God and love God. Jesus must change us so that we can see God, listen to God, and live the life. Jesus must change us. Then we see God who is kind and merciful. Jesus must speak to us. God must help us to be faithful and good. Then we treat people kind. So we must ask God to change us, to obey God. Today's story tells us that Jesus gave us something to invest. We receive something to invest. But in order to invest, we must watch and learn from Jesus. We must watch and learn from Jesus, who invests things in God's way and accomplish things in God's power. God must help us to learn from Jesus Christ. God must help us to do the ministry of Jesus. And God must help us to invest as well. But what does God want us to invest? What is important to God? As for God, people are important. So Paul asks us like this. Let's read together. First, I want you to pray for all people. Ask God to help and bless them. Give thanks for them. Pray for kings. Pray for everyone who is in authority. Pray that we can live peacefully and quietly. Pray that we will be good and holy. This is good and pleases God our Savior. God wants all people to be saved. God wants all people to come to know the truth. God is on one side. All the people on the other side, Christ Jesus is between them, bringing them together, giving his life for all people. So we pray for people in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for people daily. We pray for each other. Uh, and this is a, our work. And this is how we invest in God. Pray daily. Pray alone, pray with your spouse, pray with your children, pray with your people, and God will change people, people around you. Paul prayed like this. I pray that you overflow more and more with the love for others and keep on growing in spiritual knowledge and insight. I pray you see clearly the difference between right and wrong and inwardly clean so that no one can criticize you until our Lord returns. May you do good and kind things and show you the children, show you are the children of God. This will bring much praise and glory to God. Paul also prayed like this. And this is how I also pray for you too. I'm giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. I ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know God better. And uh, Paul, St. Paul, Apostle Paul said to the church, I wish you could know 
how much I have struggled in prayer for you and for the church at Laodicea and for my many other friends who I have never known, who have never known me personally. Prayer is a very important ministry. I pray for you. I struggle in prayer for you. This is my ministry. But let us pray for each other. Let us pray for people. Ask God to help people to know the truth of the gospel. Ask God to bless people and make them grow in Christ Jesus. Ask God to help us to worship God in spirit and truth. We must pray for people. As God wants us to want, want to use God's power to help people through our prayer. As we pray, we are investing and preparing to meet God. And one day, God may say to us, Wow, good job. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, thank you for helping us to understand you and live your life. Thank you for helping us to pray daily for your people and receive your blessing together. Thank you for helping us to pray. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.